So it turns out my appointment is actually tomorrow, but she was kind enough to squeeze me in. So now I'm just waiting for her to walk in the door. I spent my whole life in academia, almost 15 years in healthcare. But you know, I'm not defined by what I do. I'm defined by what I love. And I've been studying business and marketing and entrepreneurship. And when you see people talk to you about how to capture the audience, what they're really talking about is storytelling. And telling your story is primarily important for you, right? So that you can appreciate where you've come from, everything you've accomplished. It also gives you the opportunity to recognize the people who've helped you. You cannot rely on your memory. The memory is fleeting. And so telling your story, whether it's through video or written um, art, any, any medium, is really there for you. We've all heard that your, uh, your trials and your testimony are there primarily to benefit other people. And that's really true. And you know, uh, we see it in sports all the time. They have film and they watch their film. I even heard Beyonce watches her performances. And you know what that does? It allows you to identify areas where you can improve, where you can become better. Because the journey towards mastery doesn't have a final destination, but along the way you can get better. And so I tell my story because I want to appreciate where I've come from. I want to be able to enjoy that journey, see the growth. But really, I'm also here to share, you know, parents do it, teachers, missionaries, they all tell their stories through helping others. And that's what I'm here for. And I invite you to share your story with me as I share my journey with you. I'm here to help you if you're trying to uh, live out your dream, establish a legacy and build a coalition along the way. Will you join me? Welcome back, friends. <laughs> I'm Kimberly Madison, a ductal labor prepared nurse practitioner. But more importantly, I'm a dreamer, and I want to have friends along the journey. So I'm recording it. As you can see, today we're talking about my, really is my atopic dermatitis journey that caused post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation on my neck, and then my melasma that's been present for several years. Um, and it was before I was really, in, it was way before I was into derm, but I did have an idea that it was probably related to sun damage. And of course, over the course of time, I've since learned. So let me just make sure we're in good here. It's gonna, oh, that's better. Yeah. So welcome back. So yeah, I've already filmed like 50 minutes. And then I realized there's no volume. And even sadder is this morning, I went to the chiropractic office with my mom and we filmed so much footage and I don't have any volume. Rookie mistake number one. So let's get into it. <laughs> so this is the second episode or second installment of my um, journey for my hyperpigmentation and melasma. So the first one was in December. So my journey started more than a year ago. 
Um, after I washed my hair, I, it's so I started having some really severe itching when I would wake up in the morning around my neck. And of course I was scratching it. It's a, it's an intense itch. It's not like a regular itch, like dry skin, right? It's the kind of itch where even though you know you're not supposed to scratch, like there is no relief, okay? So I was scratching and I couldn't figure out what was going on for like three months. And um, I tried to fix it on my own. As you can see by those pictures, it was up and down. Those pictures are over the course of the last year. Um, but then in the last three months or so, it kind of just got, well, really that whole year, it wasn't really well controlled, if you ask me. But I was busy traveling as a nurse. And um, finally, now that I'm settled and things are, and I'm here, I know I'm going to be here. Um, I went and found a Durham PA and... Uh, yeah, she's my provider. And so my first appointment was, was with her last month. I did a whole video on that. So certainly be sure to check it out. Maybe I'll put a little card here. Um, but yeah, so today we're going to, this is my six week follow up, which I had um, on Tuesday. It was really scheduled for Wednesday. I got there and the, one of the people at the front desk, they were like looking through like the pack of patients that were, you know, scheduled. So she went through it a couple times. She double checked my name a couple times. <laughs> then she went to the computer. So then I was like, okay, something's not right. So then she says, oh, we have you down for tomorrow. And so I was totally cool with coming back. But um, Leah was so kind enough to, she saw how much, how far I drove. And um, she said, if you don't mind waiting, she'll squeeze me in. So she did. So you see, I posted a little bit of that earlier. And so in my first video, I mentioned that um, there's, they have a social media manager and they're following my journey. But I just felt really bad about bringing it up since I was um, off schedule. So I do a, so they won't have any footage from that on their channel, but certainly I'll have it here. But yeah, for the next one, I'll be on, I'll be there on the right day. So um, as I mentioned, uh, she gave me a morning and a nighttime routine. And so for my, for the morning, I, she didn't change the product I was already using. We're just adding. But then I, I actually, I did take away all the actives because these are plenty. So in the morning, I use the Roche-Posay's Gentle Foaming Oil Cleanser in the morning and at night. And then I put on SkinCeuticals Vitamin C. And then for the first two weeks, I was using my Fluocinolone Oil. And there's still quite a bit in here. Um, after the two... So yeah, that was the morning, and then moisturizer, sunscreen. And in the course of these six weeks, the you know, it's certainly gotten a lot colder and drier. And so at first I was using the Double Repair by La Roche-Posay. Ran out of that, switched over to some Neutrogena that they had sent me. I wanted to try it out. I think it's called their, like, it's like a newer product. Water Boost or something. And um, I use that for a little bit. And I think it's probably a really great product. I just think with everything I have going on, it's not the most appropriate one for me and my moisturizing needs. So then I went to La Roche-Posay's Triple Repair, which I already was using on my body, but I just started using it on my face. And that's been excellent. And so then at night, I use the same gentle foaming oil cleanser. Um my retinol, then I add on my uh, hydroquinotranexamic acid compound on my face only, and then on my neck, I put my azelaic, azelaic kojic acid niacinamide cream compound on my neck, and then moisturizer, go to sleep. So the first three weeks, I would say, um, maybe, probably the first two weeks, I, I don't think I had any problems but I noticed my skin was pretty sensitive and it would get like noticeably like a little flush a little red like red and so um the hydroquinone compound it is um like a little grainy and so that automatically made me be very gentle and so I put that on very carefully um and then wash my hands and then put on the next one and so in the morning, I would definitely see and feel like my skin look ex exfoliated. And so probably around like the end of the second week, got a lot of peeling and, you know, more dryness. And it became really sensitive. And so then I would take breaks and like maybe a day or two. And then I would resume. 
and then I would start, which is something I've done before, especially when I use like a, a new um, higher percentage concentration of like retinol, is put on a layer of moisturizer. Some people call it the sandwich method, put on a layer of moisturizer, then the products. And so that's what I started doing and that's been my consistent practice. So um, these actually had an expiration date of the 19th and so I had stopped using them. So when I saw Leia on Tuesday, I hadn't used any products for like four days because um, I wanted to like really restore my skin barrier <laughs> back for my visit, but also because my skin had gotten really sensitive. And so, um, yeah, so in the beginning that happened, took a little break, started using the sandwich method and that became consistent with that. Switched over to La roche Posay's triple repair and that's been my consistent practice since then. That's what I'm still doing. And then, um, yeah, so as far as the oil goes, shake it up and then, I mean, it's oil, you know what oil looks like. And so she had given me a warning that it was gonna be, you know, oily and even like the tacro would be um, thick and shiny, which it is. It's like a petroleum-based product. And so, I mean, it is a petroleum-based product. And so it is shiny, but I have to admit, I it didn't bother me. I actually really like it since I'm so used to having dry skin. And so even though I, I didn't really, if you had asked me, I wouldn't have described my skin, particularly my neck, as being irritated before I started this regimen. But once I started the fluocinolone, I could definitely feel that it was calm. Um, so yeah, for the Tacro, it's petroleum-based, mineral oil, propylene, carbonate, white wax, paraffin. So I didn't have any problems with that. I have still have quite a bit left here. So pretty much all of this here is lots of product. Because a little bit goes a long way. Same with the oil. Um, and then, so yeah. So as far as the product, it's a nice white color. So she said I can keep using it as long as it stays white. And then this one, it's not as white. It's not caramel either, but I can see that this will probably turn that way first, which is a sign of oxidation. You can kind of, you can see, I don't know if the camera's picking up here. Um, so there's that. And so, yeah, so then sometimes I would be like, you know, on the computer and, you know, you kind of just like touch your face. And then I would think like, oh, there's something on my face and I would rub it off only to realize that was actually my skin. And so I did get a few little marks from that. I've had a few other ones, but that one was the only one that kind of got darker. And um, so I've been more mindful of that. And then I did get a lot of like peeling around the ears here. And so I started using my CeraVe healing ointment, which you can use any, you can use Vaseline. I just happen to have a large jar, so I'm using it. But I would put it here because when I would, you know, product would, you know, eventually just get on my ear just from coming in this area because this is where I have a lot of darker pigment. And so I do kind of spend a little time there. And so I started doing it there around the mouth, the eyes especially, because I started getting really dry here. I don't really get dry around the nose, but I know that I know that's like a common place they recommend you can put on, um, you can do like a little extra protection. I've always been pretty sensitive here with product. And so I t typically apply product when I remember and I'm not in a rush, I'll use my pinkies to put it here so it doesn't get as irritated. I don't know if you can even, see. it's gotten a little better since I started using the triple repair in the last week, um, but you might be able to see a little bit of that. And so the pictures I showed are primarily of my neck. I think I have like one or two of my cheeks and so um, you can kind of get a close up here. I need to do a better job. I haven't done a great job of capture, of like um, documenting this as much. I guess it doesn't bother me. I mean, I, my neck honestly doesn't bother me as much as I think it would, or it, I guess it should, but it, it doesn't. Even when you see some of the pictures were really bad. Um, I was like, man, it really should have bothered me then, but it didn't. And maybe if I had short hair, I mean, I wear my hair up sometimes and it still doesn't bother me, but probably if I had short hair, I probably would be more self-conscious about it. I don't know why I'm not, but I haven't been, and I'm glad <laughs> I have enough to worry about. So yeah. I th in the pictures I posted, yeah, so I guess anyway, this is the most up to date as you can see. I had a few flares in the last couple weeks, and so I think hopefully you can see this. And I'll do better about taking pictures. 
Yeah, I think you can get a good look too. There's a little bit in here. She noticed a rough patch here, which I hadn't noticed until she pointed it out, but it's actually better than it was just a couple days ago. <clears throat> so even though originally I was supposed to use this for two weeks, she said that she told me that anytime I have like the flares to just run back to that so we can, you know, decrease my chance of getting more post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. And so since my skin leading up to this appointment this week was pretty irritated, I would definitely say it was irritated and dry, especially at the end of my work day, I would notice it the most. Um, I'm using that for two weeks and then I'll go back to the Tacro just so I can kind of calm everything down. And so the other new plan she wants me to do is to rotate. And so I'm putting the product on every other night, I think for the next six weeks. And then when I see her, um, then we'll try to get back to every day. I think she said I can go ahead and do that myself. Um, so I'll play it by ear to see how it goes. But for right now, I'll be doing every other day. And I'm going to continue with the sandwich method of the moisturizer first and then the products. That's been great. And even though I'm putting that on, I still feel like I'm getting great results. I love the texture, the shine. Um, yeah, I don't think I've had any other concerns or problems um, or reactions. So yeah, sometimes, so of the reactions, besides like the dryness and the flaking, a few times I would have just like where it just felt like my skin was open. Like I don't know any other way to describe it. It just felt so open. And so on those occasions, some, I really didn't want anything to be on there because it didn't tolerate it. So sometimes I would just use an oil, like a regular plain oil. I have almond oil back there. I've been meaning to get a sunflower oil, but I haven't. Um, and I would just use that first and then wash, wash everything off and then, um, only use my Tacro and then sometimes I had to take a break from my sunscreen too because everything was irritating, but that usually only lasts like a day or two and then I can bring it back and I didn't have any problems, so... I think that's it. So yeah, we'll go back in six weeks. She'll hear about how I'm doing and then we'll go from there. When these do finally oxidize, I can just call in and get a um, refill. Oh, and by the way, they're great. At, I love that office. They're so great at communication. Um, so when I got there and she said my appointment was actually the next day, I looked at my own calendar and realized that it was the next day. And then I checked my text messages because they're really good about communicating and sending reminders. And I was thinking, oh, I'm surprised they didn't send a reminder, but actually they did. And I didn't check it, I didn't see it. So that was all my fault, but I'm so glad that um, they were able to fit me in, but I would have had no problems going back. But I wanna, I'm, and actually it's kind of worked out that my first um, video didn't work out because I totally forgot to mention the referral code. So um, if you want to go check out, and I'll put her name in the description box again, the, in the, the clinic itself. Um, but if you're interested in being a patient of hers or getting a consultation, they do have a referral program. And so you just mention my name and both of us will get some uh, credits, money, in both of our accounts that we can use for future treatment. And um, yeah. So I think that's all I have. I've shown you my pictures. I've given you an update. The next visit is in six weeks. I don't plan to change anything. Um, I think within six weeks, it'll still be pretty much the same weather. I know when the weather changes, things will change again. Oh, she did tell me to get a humidifier. Well, she didn't say I had to, but um, a humidifier could be really helpful. And I still need to make that appointment to see the allergist. I don't know if I mentioned that in my other video, but in my first visit with her, she recommended that I see an allergist since I, I wasn't able to really control the atopic derm as, as I had been previously. And now that I was back in this climate, that maybe things were a little bit worse and being triggered by something additional. So that's on the list of things to do along with my established providers probably see them first. It's always easier for me to just see the people I already have established relationships with than the time it takes to look up someone new. So I'm just being honest. Um, so yeah, so for my next, so this is not live today because I had all the other footage. And so we'll upload this and I think I figured out how to stream live using the camera because I really want to be able to still stream live on YouTube, but I want to have the quality, um, 
quality video of this camera and the lighting. Well, the lighting works too, but the camera, I really want to continue to like play with this and figure it out. Um, so yeah, so next week we will go live again. We'll come back to part two of, actually, do I want to do that one again? I don't know if I want to do another, um, MP, like what I learned this week as an MP, or I think I want to talk, I need to talk about my business journey, but I need to write an article first. So I might postpone that until that happens. Mm, yeah. So yeah, I have some of that. Yeah. So we'll save that for the next one. Um, do I want to save that for the next one? Yeah, we'll keep it like that since that's the title. I want to be as consistent as I can with keeping to the topic of the title. So next week we'll resume with MP stuff and maybe social media because I don't know if I'll have time to write that article on my business yet. Although I do want to write it before the month is over because it's a reflection <laughs> last year and it's already can you believe january is over someone was like oh the 31st is tuesday i think and i was like we were just celebrating new year's february is a short month so it's already gonna be um over <laughs> and so uh yeah it's going by so fast um but yeah thank you so much for watching i hope you had a wonderful week i hope you have a great weekend i'll see same place next Saturday live. I don't know when I'm going to go live. I don't, I'm not that consistent yet in terms of the time of the day, but certainly if you subscribe and hit that notification bell, I can't wait till I get the sound effects. Um, then you'll be notified when I go live. And won't that be wonderful? I'm still playing around with the idea of doing like office hours. <laughs> um, and so I'm working on building that kind of network so that there's people here to you know, I can answer their questions and we can chat and things like that. So um, let's wrap it up because I've already done this and I can get long winded. So thank you so much for watching and I'll be in touch. I'll see you next time.